A very good evening and thank you for joining us on the tail end of 2023. As we approach a brand new year, we have a compilation of key events that occurred throughout the past 12 months. This is Flashback 2023. We begin tonight picking up from where we left off yesterday with the eventful month of April. Finland became a member of NATO on the 4th of April 2023, completing a historic security policy shift triggered by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Finnish Foreign Minister Pekka Havisto completed the accession process by handing over an official document to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken at NATO headquarters in Brussels, Belgium. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said on April 5th he expected additions to be announced in the coming days and weeks to alleviate anger among Polish farmers linked to Ukrainian grain imports, saying a solution had been found. Poland and Hungary announced bans on grain and other food imports from Ukraine to protect their local agricultural sectors, drawing a warning from EU's executive. The rules brought an end to a ban that was introduced without notice on April 15, leaving many companies with goods stranded across the border in Ukraine. A Ukrainian medical evacuation team retrieved the body of an unidentified soldier from the Bakhmut front line to nearby Chasivyar on April 9. According to British intelligence, Russian forces threatened a key supply route to Bakhmut. And the focus of their assault for months, which Ukraine said it was defending, was to wear Russian forces down before it launched a counter-offensive. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited military headquarters in Ukraine's Kherson and Luskansk region, which are partly held by Russia. The Kremlin said on April 18 to hear reports from commanders of the Airborne Forces and the Nipa Army Group and other senior officers on the situation in the Kherson and Saporizhia regions, both of which Moscow has proclaimed part of Russia. Russia's defence minister said its assault troops were now fighting in western parts of the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut, the last part of the city held by Ukrainian forces. Columns of black smoke rose over Sudanese capital Khartoum on April 15, as the country's armed forces and paramilitary group clashed in a struggle for power. Drone footage captured by a U.S. traveller staying in the city showed towering clouds of smoke over an airport, with at least one plane seen burning. Both the military and the RSF claimed that they had controlled the airport and other key installations in Khartoum, where fighting raged overnight. Bombardments and strikes from fighter jets rocked Khartoum on April 17 in a deadly fighting between rival military factions that threatened to derail the nation's tumbling shift from autocracy to civilian rule. Early on April 18, gunfire echoed across Khartoum, accompanied by a sound of warplanes and explosions. Countries began evacuating nations by air from April 22, while some went via Port Sudan on the Red Sea, about 800 kilometers 500 miles by road from Khartoum. The majority of Sudanese escaped their country, fled to Chad. Pope Francis led a Palm Sunday service on April 2, the day after he was discharged from hospital following a severe bout of bronchitis. The Pope was hospitalized last month after complaining of breathing difficulties but recovered quickly following infusion of antibiotics. Finns voted in a general election on April 2nd, a tightly fought race in which right-wing opposition National Coalition Party leader Petri Orpo claimed victory. Finland's Prime Minister Sanna Marin was the world's youngest Prime Minister when she took office in 2019, aged 34. Donald Trump, the former US President and frontrunner for the 2024 Republican nomination, pleaded not guilty in a New York court on April 4 to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records after an investigation into hush money paid to a porn star. Trump said nothing before entering the courtroom for the proceedings before a judge and when he left court roughly an hour later. Afterwards, he flew home to Florida, where he addressed supporters and denied committed any crimes. China carried out three days of military drills around Taiwan after Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen returned from the United States, having met with U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Police in Louisville, Kentucky on April 11th released body cam footage showing the desperate rush by a rookie policeman and his training officer to bring a mass shooting at Kentucky Bank to an end. The footage was shown by Louisville Metro Police Deputy Chief Paul Humphrey a day after an employee of Old National Bank killed five people and wounded nine others, including the two officers, while he live-streamed video of the attack on Instagram. US President Joe Biden stopped in Northern Ireland on April 12th to mark the 25th anniversary of peace in Belfast ahead of a longer visit to Ireland. The brief stop came against the backdrop of the latest political stalemate, in which the devolved power-sharing government, a key part of the 1998 peace deal, has not met for more than a year due to a row about post-Brexit trade arrangements. 
Biden was welcomed by Ireland's President Michael Higgins and his wife Sabina Coyne at their residence in Dublin during a three-day visit to the country on April 13th. The US leader signed a guest book, writing that it was an honour to return to the home of his ancestors and attended a state banquet held in his honour in Dublin on April 13th evening. A group of protesters entered offices of stock market operator Euronext in Parilla Defence Business District on April 20th, saying big companies must pay up to finance pensions as part of wide protests against an unpopular raise of the retirement age. French President Emmanuel Macron signed into law the weekend before a rise in the retirement age, which means citizens must work two years longer, to 64, before receiving their state pension. US President Joe Biden filed documents on April 25th, officially announcing he will seek a second White House term in 2024. Biden made his announcement in a slickly produced video released by his new campaign team, in which he declares it is his job to defend America's democracy. Mainland Spain broke temperature records for April in an early season heat wave that exacerbated a long drought in some regions. Catalan firefighters battled a wildfire which started in southwestern France and crossed the Spanish border on April 16th. In the hottest region of Spain, the southwestern city of Seville boosted its emergency services budget and brought in extra healthcare worker numbers in case of heat exhaustion during the Feria de Bill as the city braced for temperatures close to 40 degrees Celsius. At least 78 people were killed in a stampede in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, as residents gathered at a school to receive cash donations distributed by merchants during Ramadan, witnesses and Houthi administration said on April 20th. Hundreds of people crowded to receive the arms, which amounted to 5,000 Remni Riyals, or about $9 per person, two witnesses involved in the rescue effort told. Turkish police on April 25th detained 110 people of alleged militant ties, security sources said, with the pro-Kurdish lawmaker saying politicians, lawyers and journalists were among those hailed in raids that he linked to elections on May 14th. The operation was focused on Diyarbakir, the largest city in mainly Kurdish southeast Turkey, and targeted people across 21 provinces, including Istanbul, accused of links to the outlawed Kurdistan work party militant group. And that was a summing up of key events that occurred in April of 2023. Join us after the break for more. Welcome back. Moving on to the month of May now, which began with the claims of an alleged Ukrainian drone attack against the Russian President Vladimir Putin. More on that now. A video showing the moment a drone exploded about the Moscow Kremlin in an alleged Ukraine drone attack against the Russian president was shared on 3rd of May by numerous online news outlets. The video showed a flying object approaching the dome of Kremlin's Stenate building overlooking Red Square and exploding in an intense burst of light just before reaching it. Russia accused Ukraine of the attack in a failed attempt to kill President Vladimir Putin. Ukraine's emergency service released video of firefighters tackling a huge blaze in what was said to be a food warehouse in Odessa following a Russian missile strike. Odessa officials reported three people wounded and one person missing. It was one of the biggest volleys of missiles and drones yet in a renewed Russia air campaign unleashed 10 days before, following a lull since early March. While attending the Victory Day parades in Moscow, Putin said Russians were united in a sacred fight with the West over Ukraine, but the strains of war were evident. Putin has repeatedly likened the war in Ukraine, which he casted as a defensive move against the West, which wants to carve up Russia to the challenge Moscow faced when Adolf Hitler invaded the Soviet Union in 1941. Zelensky held talks with Pope Francis at the Vatican on 13th of May. The pontiff said in late April that the Holy See was involved in a peace mission to end Ukraine's war with Russia. The head of Kyiv's military administration, Serhii Popko, said on Telegram that the Ukrainian capital had been attacked by Russian cruise missiles on May 18th and that all of them were downed by air defences. Strikes on Kyiv continued on May 29th as Russia launched its 16th air attack on the Ukrainian capital that month, hours after unleashing dozens of missiles and drones overnight as Ukraine celebrated the anniversary of its founding. Ukrainian drones struck Moscow on May 30th, Russia said, in what one politician called the worst such attack since World War II, while Kyiv also hit by air for the third time in 24 hours. The early morning raid targeted some of Moscow's wealthiest areas, including a western zone where Putin and the elite have resided. Supporters of Britain's royal family began to gather outside Buckingham Palace in the early hours of May 6, ahead of King Charles' coronation. But elsewhere in central London, royal supporters encountered a large crowd of yellow-clad anti-monarchy protesters. King Charles III was crowned in Britain's biggest ceremonial event 
event for seven decades. Charles succeeded his mother, Queen Elizabeth, when she died in September 2022. At 74, he became the oldest British monarch to have the 360-year-old St. Edward's crown placed on his head as he sat upon 14th century throne at London's Westminster Abbey. The World Health Organization said on 5th of May that COVID-19 no longer represented a global health emergency, a major step towards the end of a pandemic that killed more than 6.9 million people, disrupted the global economy and ravaged communities. Frequent air strikes and artillery attacks continued into May in Sudan despite a support ceasefire agreed by both the National Army and the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces. The United Nations said on May 17 more than half of Sudan's population now needed aid and protection as civilians sought shelter from the airstrikes and sporadic clashes in the Khartoum area. Protesters in Paris set electric bicycles and chairs on fire on May 1st as workers demonstrated in anger at President Emmanuel Macron's increase in the retirement age during a Labour Day rally. Police fired tear gas and scuffled with protesters in the capital as they were trying to escape the fumes. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida welcomed leaders from the world's richest democracies to the G7 Leaders Summit in Hiroshima on April 19th. The three-day summit in a city hit by the world's first atomic bombing in 1945 came as Russia's invasion of Ukraine continued to its second year and amid fears Putin could try to use tactical nuclear weapons in an escalation of the war. During the final day of the three-day G7 summit, US President Joe Biden announced a $375 million package of military aid, including artillery and armored vehicles for Ukraine. Other leaders of the G7, the United States, Japan, Germany, Britain, France, Italy and Canada echoed Biden's sentiments. Kosovo police and protesters clashed in the town of Zevakan on May 26th after a crowd gathered in front of the municipality building and tried to prevent a newly elected ethnic Albanian mayor from entering his office. Police fired tear gas to disperse protesters and a police car was set ablaze. The protesters followed the local elections that were widely boycotted among some 50,000 Serbs living in four North Kosovo municipalities after their demands for more autonomy had not been met. Residents of Gaza said they were terrified after waking up to sounds of explosions after several cities were hit by strikes from Israel on 9th of May. The airstrikes on Gaza killed three senior Islamic Jihad commanders and at least nine civilians, including four children in an operation that drew an immediate threat of retaliation from the militant group. Israel said it targeted three leaders of Islamic Jihad, an Iranian-backed group that is on terrorism watch lists in West and which commands the second biggest armed network in Gaza. The Gaza skyline was eliminated on the 9th of May 10th as Palestinian militants launched hundreds of rockets across the border, setting off sirens as far away as Tel Aviv. The second round of cross-border fire in a week came after Israel's May 9th strikes and months of escalating violence. Pakistan's anti-corruption agency arrested former Prime Minister Imran Khan at Islamabad High Court on May 9th in a dramatic move that threatened fresh turmoil in the country as his party called for nationwide protests. Khan's arrest came a day after the powerful military issued a rare public rebuke of the former Premier for repeated accusations against a senior military official of attempting to assassinate him and the military's former chief for being behind the move to remove him from power. Incumbent Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan looked to extend his rule into a third decade in a fiercely fought presidential election on May 14. The vote was closely watched in Europe, Washington, Moscow and across the region, where Erdogan has asserted Turkish power while strengthening ties to Russia and putting a strain on Ankara's traditional alliance with the United States. Greek Prime Minister Kyriak Cosme Totakis cast his vote on May 21st as he sought a second term in a general election unlikely to produce a clear winner. While opinion polls place the ruling conservative New Democracy Party in the lead, a change to the country's electoral system means it was likely to fall short of an absolute majority. A cost-of-living crisis took centre stage in the campaign, with parties trying to woo voters with pledges to increase the minimum wage and create jobs. Spiring prices have had a profound impact on Greeks, while living standards plunged during a decade-long debt crisis. Following the election, the three biggest parties, New Democracy, Syriza and the Socialist PASOK each turned down a mandate to form a governing coalition, pushing for a second vote, which was to be held under a voting system that was giving the leading party bonus seats. Parliament was again dissolved on May 29th, ahead of the repeat vote on June 25th. Italy's northeastern Emilia Romagna and Marche regions were battered by torrential rain on May 16th and suffered extensive flooding. The Ponte della Monta bridge near Bologna collapsed on the morning of May 17th after the waters of the Idis River broke their banks. According to the authorities, flooding and landslides triggered by heavy rain killed at least 129 people in Rwanda on May 3rd. Muddy water flowed swiftly down an inundated 
road and destroyed houses as residents were seen scampling to recover the little that was left. Floods also hit the Democratic Republic of Congo, where more than 400 people were killed in the first week of May. It was one of the country's deadliest disasters in recent history. Day's survivors mourned multiple family members killed in the flash flooding, which swept away entire homes and buried the villages of Bushushu and Niamukubi in the eastern South Kivu province in musk and debris. The eastern Canadian city of Halifax declared a seven-day state of local emergency late May 28th after wildfire caused evacuations and power outages. The fire sent a huge pile of smoke over the port city with roads significantly affected. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More on Flashback 2023 right after this. We now enter the third and final month plan for tonight's run-up of Flashback 2023, which is the month of June. From India's worst train accident in decades to Titan submersible implosion and the fatal Columbian pain clash, here's a look at June 2023. A torrent of water burst through the huge Kavkoka Dam on the Dnipro River that separates Russian and Ukrainian forces in southern Ukraine on June 6, flooding a swath of war zone and forcing villagers to flee. Ukraine and its western allies accused Russia of blowing up the dam in a deliberate war crime. The Kremlin said it was Ukraine that had sabotaged the dam to distract attention from the counteroffensive Moscow claims in flattering. Some Russian installed officials said the dam had burst on its own. Neither side offered immediate public evidence of who was to blame. The Geneva Conventions explicitly banned targeting dams in war because of the danger to civilians posed by destruction of such works and installations containing dangerous forces. At least 288 people died in India's worst rail crash in over two decades, officials said on June 3rd, after a passenger train went off the tracks and hit another one in an accident. A preliminary report blamed on signal failure. One train in the June 2nd accident also hit a freight train parked nearby in the district of Balasore, in Odisha district, in the east of the country, leaving a tangled mess of smashed rail cars and injuring 803. Hundreds of uncontrolled forest fires ablaze across Canada on June 7, threatening critical infrastructure, forcing evacuations and sending a blanket of smoky air wafting over U.S. cities. The U.S. National Weather Service issued air quality alerts for virtually the entire Atlantic seaboard, held from Vermont to South Carolina and as far west as Ohio and Kansas warned residents that spending time outdoors could cause respiratory problems due to high levels of fine particulates in the atmosphere. On June 11th, the Colombian government released footage of the rescue of four children who had gone missing in the country's dense jungle for more than 40 days after a deadly plane crash. Videos broadcasted by public television stations showed members of the local indigenous guard with the siblings after they were found on the border between Colombian provinces of Coqueta and Guavere on the afternoon of June 9th. Exactly a month before his death, on June 12th, former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi made his last video address to political supporters from a Milan hospital. In his final video appearance on May 12th, Berlusconi invited his Forza Italia party supporters to vote in administrative elections to be held in several Italian cities in a couple of days later. Former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi, a billionaire businessman who created the country's largest media company before transforming the political landscape, died on on June 12th, age 86. At least 79 migrants drowned early on June 14th and hundreds more were missing and feared dead after their overloaded boat capsized and sank in the open seas of Greece in one of Europe's deadliest shipping disasters in recent years. As a painstaking search for survivors continued, a European rescue support charity said it believed around 750 people were on board the 20 to 13 metre long vessel. The UN's migration agency estimated up to 400, while Greece declined to speculate on the passenger count. A Media reports said that the boat left from Libya and a shipping ministry official who spoke on conditions of anonymity said most of those on board were from Egypt, Syria and Pakistan. Israeli commandos backed by helicopter gunships killed five Palestinians, including a teenager, and wounded as many as 66 after a raid in the West Bank led to an hours-long gun battle with armed fighters on June 18th. Seven Israeli personnel were wounded after troops came under fire during an operation in the flashpoint town of Jenin to arrest two Palestinians suspected in attacks. At least two of the Palestinians killed in the fighting belonged to the armed Islamic Jihad group. A submersible taking worldy tourists 
tourist who visited the site of the Titanic wreckage in deep waters of the coast of Canada was missing for a third day on June 20th, as US and Canadian ships and planes swept a huge area trying to find the vessel. A debris field from Titan was found at the bottom of the North Atlantic on June 22nd by a robotic diving vehicle deployed from a Canadian search vessel, ending an intense five-day international rescue effort. The US Coast Guard said the debris was consistent with a catastrophic implosion of the vehicle. All five aboard the vessel were killed. Protesters shot fireworks at police and set cars ablaze in the working-class Paris suburb of Nanterre. Hours after President Emmanuel Macron on June 28th deplored the inexcusable fatal shooting of a 17-year-old boy during a traffic stop there. The shooting of the teenager on June 27th, who was of North African origin, has fueled long-running complaints of police brutality in the ethnic diverse suburbs of France's biggest cities. Major French cities saw a third night of riots on June 30th, as President Macron fought to contain a mounting unrest triggered by the deadly police shooting of the teenager. And that is all we have time for you on tonight's rendition of Flashback 2023. Join us again tomorrow for a complete recap of the months of July through to September. If you had missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.